Oh, winter storm barreled through Rochester over the last 24 hours, dumping over a foot of snow on most of the region, including here at the Rochester Institute of Technology, where the Air Force team bus actually got stuck after last night's game. They got to the hotel. They're all right. The skies have cleared as the storm has departed, making way for hockey night here on campus as the hometown RIT Tigers wrap up their two-game series with the Air Force Academy. Number nine for the Falcons is sophomore Trevor Stone. Stone scored his third goal of the season last night. It proved to be the game winner for the Falcons, while on the other side, the captain, number 19, Miles Powell, scored his eighth on the season with 21 points in 19 games. Miles Powell is RIT's leading scorer. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. Highlights, live interviews, much more on the way as we get you set for puck drop coming up at 7.05. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach and welcome to RIT Sports Zone pregame live here on CW Rochester and streaming all season long on RITSC.com. Well, the Tigers returned to the Policini Center last night for the first time in 41 days to renew what has become a tremendous rivalry with Air Force since both schools joined Atlantic Hockey back in 2006. Tigers and Falcons combining for nine Atlantic Hockey championships in the last 11 seasons with Air Force entering the night as the reigning champs and we're going to pick up the action in the first period. The Tigers with a great chance. Doesn't appear that we have them. There they are. Check out the highlights from last night. Tigers with a great chance early on against Air Force. Mark Logan all alone. Billy Christopoulos making the stop. The puck sits in the crease. Jake Levin assists on the save for the Falcons. Midway through the opening period, Air Force gets on the board. Ben Kuchera drops it to Eric Baskin, who nets his 10th on the season. Air Force had the 1-0 lead. They would add to it later in the period. Trevor Stone, the wrister, beating Logan Drackett, stick side. The Falcons scored twice on three shots and held a two-goal lead after one. Start of the second. Golden opportunity again for RIT. Another breakaway. Sean Cameron denied, though, by Christopoulos as he was up to the challenge once again. It would stay 2-0 Falcons until the third period. Watch this, Sean Cameron, the nice look to Miles Powell, controls the puck and puts it in, his eighth on the year, and all of a sudden it was a one-goal game, as it should be between these two teams. RIT would pull Logan Drackett for the extra attacker with 154 remaining, and the Tigers would get a number of opportunities. Gabe Valenzuela and Miles Powell right there, missing on those chances as they couldn't get a stick on the puck. Air Force coming up with three big saves and the Falcons blocking four big shots down the stretch to secure a 2-1 victory last night. You try not to get too frustrated, but of course those things happen and stuff like that. So yeah, I think uh, they definitely buried on their opportunities, so give them credit for that. And we definitely missed on ours. So I mean, looking at uh, looking at tomorrow, that's something that we gotta we gotta fix for sure. Yeah, they're they're a hard team to play against. They just they don't really give you anything. Um, you gotta work you gotta outwork them to get any any chances you want. And they're a hardworking team, so um, we definitely expected that type of game from them. And it's kind of a playoff game feel. When you get down two nothing after the first step, any game left to play, but against a team like Air Force that buckles down is so sound defensively, how tough is that to battle through mentally? Yeah, it's tough. Like in the in the first intermission, we knew that we could come back, and we've we came back before. But um, just Air Force is just a hardworking team, and they they do their job right, and they know they know how to how to win. They know how to play play games in the lead. So they showed that tonight. But hopefully, we can start off the the game better tomorrow. Trevor Stone. Quick shot and a goal. Better here tonight Stone as we take a look inside the, the numbers from last night's game. RIT held Air Force to just 13 shots on net. That is a record for the least amount of shots allowed in the Division I era. The five-minute major on Chris McKay, the big penalty on the night. RIT only had to kill off three minutes of it after Air Force took a silly penalty. Since moving to D1, 31 of 49 meetings between these two have ended in ties or have been decided by just one goal. So tonight marks the fourth and final meeting between these two teams, unless, of course, they meet in the postseason, which has happened before for a preview. Our Kim Burnson is standing by live with RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. Good evening, Kim. How's it going, Kevin? Uh, coach, last night, emotions running really high uh, when the guys got off the ice, a lot of frustration. What was the mood like in the locker room following the game, and how does that transition today? Well, we, we just had to uh, dwell on the positives and not the negatives. The negatives were we didn't score enough, and uh, we had to capitalize on our chances. 
positive is that we limited the 13 chances. So I, you know, I like our odds if we were able to do that again, which I don't know if we can duplicate. But uh, we still got to come up with a good defensive effort tonight. And then when uh, we got to create a little bit more offense, whether it be rebound chances, more shots uh, directed to the net, more people going to the net. And then if you get a couple of breakaways like we did last night, we got to get uh, at least one out of it, if not two. Uh, Christian Short getting the start and goal tonight. What led to that decision? Uh, they're both been playing very well, so we're looking for a spark here. And, and, and I thought uh, uh, Logan did a good job last night, particularly handling the puck out of the, out of the net. But we've got to get someone that, for, for somehow, is going to find us to get a, a, a win is, is the ultimate goal. So, uh, you know, Christian's played well, so we're going to see what he can do here tonight. And uh, we have a lot of confidence in both of them. One of them, though, has to get on a roll. So uh, last night you held uh, Air Force to 13 shots. How do you hope to replicate that effort? Well, you know, I think our, our intensity defensively and, and uh, marking our guys early, communicating, and then getting right on them. And uh, good sticks. We deflected a lot up into the, up into the netting, into the corners. Uh, you know, they missed the net uh, uh, quite a bit. So I thought we did a good job with all that. But I thought it started a lot with our, our neutral zone. And I, and I thought they did the same to us where we are forced to dump a puck. We force them to dump a lot of pucks. Uh, if you can limit the number of carry-ins where they can maybe generate some shots from, that's, that's a good thing for us. So we're going to try and stand them up uh, in the neutral zone and uh, get them to dump the puck and then go back and break it out ourselves. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Uh, John Tatulio standing by on the Air Force bench. All right. Thank you, Bernsey. Here standing by. Coach, typical RIT Air Force game decided by one goal. How do you do it tonight? You only got 13 shots last night. How do you come away with four points? You know what, though? Our shooting percentage was pretty good. You know, all we needed was two last night. Now, we got to get more people to the blue paint. Uh, you know, when you look at that and you say 13 shots, you, you look and you say, well, Air Force really got outplayed. Uh, we didn't see it that way. We watched the film today, and, and we, we did a lot of good things. We just didn't penetrate. We got to do a better job of penetrating. But we forechecked well. We had... Uh, we had equal, at least equal possession of the puck as RIT, uh, but uh, they did a little bit better job of, of penetrating. Part of that was they were they were chasing the scoreboard the entire game. We got off to a two nothing lead, and they they got to make something happen. You know, I don't want to say we were protecting the lead, but we weren't because we weren't. We were playing to get the next goal. But um, you know, your mindset's a little bit different. But there's no question we got to get more people and more pucks to the blue paint tonight. How difficult will it be without Ledford and Himley tonight, shorthanded, losing two really key contributors? Ledford, Himley, Jaeger, uh, uh, um, our uh, all-league Boji is at home right now. I mean, we, so we've got we've got three guys in Himley, Boji, and Ledford that are all-conference, former all-conference players that are on our all-conference wall at home. We've only, we, we're kind of dealing with what the Tigers had to deal with last year. We've just been smoked with injuries We've only got three players that haven't missed games for injuries this year, and one of them is our goalie, uh, Billy Christopoulos. Um, so we've lost 119 man games. So for us to be at 500 right now and scrapping, I'm real proud of our group. But uh, um, hopefully we can get through this tonight. Um, but uh, obviously in the, long, in the long run, in the long term, we got to get Ledford back. We got to get Himley back. We got to get Boji back. And we got to get Cook back. You love playing in this town. Five straight wins in Rochester for you. Try to make it six tonight. Thanks, Coach. Yes, thanks for the math. I need that. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> That's head coach Frank Saratori. Kevin, back to you. All right, John. Frank told us yesterday Atlanta Hockey has arrived and that there's not one bad team in the league this season. You can see that in the standings is now three schools have a share of first place. Canisius, Niagara, Holy Cross all have 20 points, followed by surging AIC, who shut out Canisius last night at Harbor Center. Robert Morris, idle this weekend, remains fifth. RIT is seven, still five points out of first place. Last night's victory has moved Air Force into a tie with Bentley at ninth. Speaking of Bentley, they wrap up their series with Army tonight after skating with a 3-3 tie last night at West Point. Holy Cross going for the sweep of Sacred Heart. Canisius and Niagara both hoping to have at least a share of that first place. The Eagles and are at Mercyhurst while Canisius hosts AIC. Well, still to come on the program with Air Force Academy in town, it's the perfect time to revisit why a single orange seat sits alone among a sea of gray and black here at the Bolasini Center. Plus, Rochester native Brian Gianta will captain Team USA in the upcoming Winter Olympics. We'll share how RIT has helped him on his journey to the games in South Korea. That's all straight ahead as we get you ready for Air Force and RIT. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live.
back here on RIT Sports on pregame live. Those were just a few of the images captured last night during the Air Force Academy's 2-1 victory over RIT. Our thanks to the Sports Zone photo team of Caitlin Dolan, Riley Joslin, and Jedediah Plumley. Well, if you're just joining us here tonight, there's been a change in the net for RIT. As we mentioned earlier, Logan Drackett got the start last night. Tonight, head coach Wayne Wilson going with Christian Short. Short has come on as of late. Tonight will mark his sixth start on the season. The Vaughn, Ontario native is 2-3 and three with a 3.03 goals against average. For Air Force, no surprise here. Billy Christopoulos will make his 24th straight start this season for the Falcons. Christopoulos made 25 saves and earned his 10th win on the year last night. Air Force head coach Frank Saratori said after the game that it could have gone either way, but he was glad he had the best player on the ice, that being number 44. Well, speaking of goalies, with Air Force in town, we thought it would be appropriate to revisit a story we first brought to you last season. Among the 4,000 seats here at the Gene Policy Center, one stands out from the rest. If you've been here, it's hard not to notice the lone orange seat among a sea of gray and black because much like the former Tiger at Honors, the seat stands out even in the biggest crowd. His name was Green Williams. He was just a great guy to be around. Uh, you know, everybody loved Green. You know, they loved the way, you know, he, he operated. They loved the way he kidded around and they loved his big burly mustache. <laughs> Williams and Jim Stanley were fraternity brothers at Phi Sigma Kappa back in the 70s. And while Stanley played football, Williams was a goaltender for the RIT hockey team. Green wasn't the most gifted uh, goalie in the world, but uh, I soon learned uh, by being with him quite a bit. He had the uh, you know, heart of a lion and uh, his work ethic made up for any skills that, uh, that, that he lacked. After graduating from RIT, Williams enrolled in the United States Air Force, where tragically he was killed in 1984 during a pilot training accident. It was quite devastating because uh, he was young, you know. We were, all, we were all young in our prime and, you know, just getting started in life. So it was kind of a, a, a real shock. And, you know, to this day, you know, whenever I see a jet stream across the sky uh, and anybody who knew Green closely thinks of Green. Thanks to Green's sister, former teammates, and fraternity brothers like Stanley, a permanent tribute can be found in section 107, row K, seat number eight. A single orange seat right above the net where William spent his time as a Tiger. How important is it to tell people that don't know about, about Green and, and what he not only meant to you, but, but to RIT. I miss him, you know, I just, you know, I just, I guess I just miss my friend. Having the seat here, it, it gives us a chance to remember him. It gives him a chance, it gives us a chance to remember, you know, what kind of fellow he was and, and you know, what he did for, uh, again, RIT and his fraternity and his, especially his country. Uh, you know, we're all proud uh, of that, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people that went through the hockey program that served our country and uh, may have been injured or may have actually been killed, but uh, I saw the chance to uh, recognize Green uh, in, a, in a special way for everyone that served in our, in our, in our military. The orange seat is available for purchase throughout the men's and women's hockey season. In addition to the seat, the men's hockey program also honors Green's memory with the Green B. Williams Award for Academic Excellence, which is awarded the player with the highest grade point average each season. Last year's recipient was forward Todd Skirving, who's currently playing in the ECHL for the Orlando Solar Bears. Well, still to come here tonight, John and Gene join us to break down tonight's matchup between the Tigers and Falcons. Plus, we'll tell you how RIT has helped play a role in one local player's journey to next month's Olympic Winter Games. That's next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Poked ahead, opportunity going in. Logan, breakaway, Logan, backhand, and Christopoulos the save, Ooh. and it was sitting right there. And center ice, Baskin trying to push it ahead, and here's Kuchera. Kuchera leaving there, score! Goal by number 27, Eric Baskin, and just like that, 9.28 remaining in the first. Air yep. Force taking the 1-0 lead. There's Trevor Stone. Quick shot and a goal. Stone with the goal. 2-0 Air Force. I'm just saying, Air Force is applying pressure right now. They really are. And if McKay got away with a turnover, or where he pitched, Drakkett just didn't locate the puck. That's a puck he's got to handle. That's a shot. He's got a clean window to see it. And right there, 
Tomorrow night, kids are free here. It's supposed so. to be a little better tomorrow night. I think it's supposed to stop whatever we're getting. I don't even know what's doing outside. I don't even oh. care. Cameron in front. Get it in. Oh, pushes it in. And finally, the Tigers on board with 724 remaining. Miles Powell with his eighth goal of the season. There you go. Working hard. Back to Powell. Centering pass in front. And that's going to be swept to the near corner. Brown in front. Powell off the stick. Brubaker fires. Big save by Christopoulos. Trying to get it out. Will it hold it in? Will it sending it ahead off the glove? Right out in front. Just going wide. And it's going to be cleared. But that is going to be clear for Ice to take the draw. Big fight for it. Kicking it ahead. Trickling through. Push to the corner. Five seconds remaining. And Air Force is going to win this game. And that is how Air Force claimed game one of this two-game series last night. Just a reminder, if you miss any of our home games this season, you can catch up on the highlights on our website anytime. Head to ritse.com and click on Hockey Central. Joined now by Gene Battaglia and John DeTulio. And guys, it was tough to generate offense for both teams last night. Air Force getting a little puck luck there. And it certainly goes a long way when these two teams meet. You need puck luck and you need some breaks. Yeah, that was a grinder of a game for both teams last night. I mean, you could look at it that the Tigers didn't break through the third, but John, they only allowed 13 shots altogether. That's uh, the best ever in the D1 level. Solid performance is by both defenses last night, not only by RIT, but by the Falcons, but a typical matchup between Air Force and RIT, always tightly contested, always comes down to one goal. Well, what makes Air Force so difficult, one reason, the experience of this team. Uh, they have been back here again and again. Senior leadership on this team, and as we saw in the highlights, our player to watch, Eric Baskin, our player, certainly one of the veterans on this Air Force team. He's a senior, he's healthy, and listen, they don't have many healthy players in this lineup, but uh, Eric Baskin, 10 goals on the night, came up big last night. He's a big kid, anchors that top line, the assistant captain. And again, this is a seasoned team led by number 27. For the RIT Tigers, so much of their offense actually starts on the back end. And one of those players, Chase Norsh, first game back last night after missing weeks with injury, John. So how do you think he did? Uh, no coincidence, they held Air Force to 13 shots. You get number eight back in the lineup, one of the best defensemen, not only on this team, but in the entire conference. He missed the last four games. He was a force last night. He adds punch to their power play and penalty kill as well. Good to have number eight back. That's why they were even more effective last night on the blue line. So for the Tigers, the pattern here, like going all the way back, obviously, to the Providence weekend, then at Niagara. Friday night, lost Saturday night, a little bit better. Yeah. So tonight, what do the Tigers have to do here? I think what you got to do is, number one, who is up for shots, Gito? <laughs> right? <laughs> Some more shots here. 29 combined shots for both teams. RIT only 25, but got the ball, 26. The bulk of those came in the third period. Short-term memory for for Christian Short did not play well last Friday against Niagara. And you got to ground the Falcons again, hold them to 13 shots or maybe even fewer. I think you've got uh, the recipe there for two points for the Tigers. So RIT Air Force, always good hockey. We had another one goal game last night. Wouldn't be surprised if we have another tonight, Kevin. Yeah, it should be fun, guys. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Thanks so much. Meanwhile, one Rochester native is just weeks away from competing on the world's biggest stage. Greece's Brian Gianta won a national championship at Boston College in 2001. He won the Stanley Cup with the Devils in 2003. Now, in February, Gianta will take a shot at one of the only prizes that has eluded him during his remarkable hockey career. Pessing has it go off his stick. He's got Gianta all alone in front. Gianta scores! Brian Gianta spent 15 seasons in the NHL until the Sabres cut him loose this past offseason. But instead of calling it quits, Gianta turned his attention to the Olympic Games, where for the first time since 1994, NHL players will not be featured on the ice. Just to be on the team is, is a big thing, and, uh, you know, at my age, uh, not sure what was ahead of me uh, this year, and uh, this opportunity kind of fell, through, fell in my lap, and uh, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Gianta started his journey to the games in South Korea, where he started most of the off-seasons during his pro career, working out here at RIT. 
it's been a great uh, partnership we've had there. Uh, they do a great job of setting things up for us, and uh, we got the whole pro group there, and uh, some of the college kids that stick around at RIT, they train with us. Uh, so we have a great uh, facility, obviously, with the new facility. Um, and then we have the ice and the availability of the players. And uh, coaches have been great. Coach Wilson's been great. Uh, the university has been awesome with us. And uh, it's been a perfect setup. I don't think anyone uh, has as good of a setup anywhere when they train in the summer. So we got the trainer, we got the medical side, we got the ice, we got all the facilities. So uh, it's ideal. Since the fall, Gianta has continued his workouts with the AHL's Rochester Americans. With past Olympic experience and over 1,000 NHL games, Games under his belt, the 39-year-old was the obvious choice to be named captain of Team USA. Only one with Olympic experience on this uh, team for this year. What can you take from your experience in 06 that can help this group out this year? Well, I think common some nerves. Uh, the Olympics are a big event, and uh, you can get wrapped up in a lot of things there. And uh, at times, we're, uh, things aren't going to go our way, and we're going to need to uh, settle back into things. And uh, I think that's what that the older guys are there for and uh, to kind of help that process and hopefully I can uh, be that guy for the team. Disappointment in 06, uh, finishing eighth. I mean, does that fuel you going into these games? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the things in my career I haven't been able to uh, accomplish and uh, to come back with a, a medal from the Olympics would be a, uh, a dream come true. But medal or not, when Gianta returns to the States, he's open to joining an NHL team for the stretch run if the opportunity is right. That door could be open. Um, if there are opportunities, I'll, I'll look at them. Um, it's something that uh, for sure you'd be interested in, but at the same time, I've, I've come to peace with that if this is it, that's it. Uh, but if there's an opportunity, I'll for sure uh, look at it and, and decide whether or not to pursue it or not. So Buffalo gets another Yeah, best of luck certainly home. to Brian Gianta and Team USA next month in South Korea. He certainly is one of the great guys in hockey. Well, when we come back, we'll check the RIT Athletics scoreboard as women's hockey and men's and women's basketball were in action this afternoon. Plus, we're closing in on game time. John and Gene will rejoin us next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Here at the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, it is kids' night. The winter storm has come and gone, and we are ready for some hockey as RIT hosts Air Force here tonight. Elsewhere in RIT Athletics today, the RIT women's hockey team struggles continue. They're now winless in their last 14 games after getting swept by Mercyhurst. Tigers back here against Robert Morris next weekend. Women's basketball suffering its first Liberty League loss of the season. They're now 11-2 on the year after a 75-70 loss at home to Vassar. And the men's hoops team victorious 61-57. Coach McVean and company getting the win at home today. While RIT hits the road for a makeup date with Mercyhurst, we are not back with you until next Friday when the league leaders come to town. Our coverage kicks off with RIT Sports Zone pregame live at 6.30. CW will rebroadcast that game at 10 o'clock. Well, that does it for yet another edition of RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Thanks so much for watching. Up next, John and Gene have the call of all the action between RIT and Air Force. Enjoy it. We'll see you back here for the intermission report. RIT Sports Zone live begins right now.